In this video, I'm going to show you how to solve problems of mechanics using the energy methods. This is especially useful when you're solving problems that involve impact loads. Strain energy of a member is defined as the increase in energy associated with the deformation of this member. So if you draw a graph of load P against deformation X, then the graph that you get will look something like this. The area under the graph is U which is strain energy. So using integration you can be written as the integral of P dx from 0 to some x1. Say this is x1. Now strain energy density is just strain energy per unit volume. So I'm going to write strain energy with a small u as du, d capital U, by dv. Now remember that because we're going to be using it later. Now, if capital U can be written as integral of P dx, then dividing the equation by V will give you strain energy. So U is equal to integral of P dx, except now I'm going to split V as area into length. So that is A times L. Now P by L is obviously stress. And dx by L can be thought of as d strain. So if that is stress, then this can be thought of as so now u is equal to integral I'm sorry zero to some strain E1 epsilon 1 sigma x d of epsilon x the subscript x is just to show the direction of the stress and the deformation you don't have to worry about that using some basic integration and Hooke's law we can write this as u equals sigma square by 2e where e is the modulus of uh, elasticity Young's modulus now if strain energy density is du by dv then strain energy can be written as the integral of u dv this is what we're going to be using strain energy putting this putting this back into this you get integral of sigma square by 2e dv and the limits can be 0 to some v this is the basic equation that we're going to be working with for different cases of loading
Let's consider strain energy under axial loading. This is a beam subjected to a load P Newton. It has length L and a cross section area of A. From Hooke's law, the stress sigma can be written as P by A. Using the equation that we derived already, U will be equal to integral P square A square by 2E dx with the limits 0 to L. Oops, I'm sorry. I mean d dv right that's the formula from 0 to v where v is the volume of the beam now I can write dv as a times dx and that's what I'm going to use u will now become integral of P square by A square times 2E A times DX. So, <coughs> integrating and applying limits, you get strain energy U is equal to P square. L by 2 A E. So this is for I'm sorry, axial loading. Now consider this beam that's under bending. It has a moment m about that point, that's about distance x from the supported end. From our bending equations, you probably know this. Sigma by y is equal to m by i. where sigma is the stress, y is the deflection, m is the bending moment, and i is the moment of inertia. So using the same equation, that is u is integral of sigma squared by 2e dv And replacing sigma with this expression, you get this u equals integral m square y square 2e times i square dv okay but now it gets a little tricky this is what I'm going to do I'm going to write dv as adx but I'm going to continue and do this does that make sense because this This is the same as this. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put u is equal to integral m square by 2e i square y square integral d 
da dx from 0 to L. And now I'm going to put this y square into the integral sign in here. And let's see if that reminds us of something. m square by 2e i square. What's this? y square dA integral. This is obviously moment of inertia. Putting that back, we get u 0 to L m square by 2 e i square i dx. Cancelling this i and one i from here, we get u is equal to integral m square by 2 e i dx limits 0 to l. Now m is going to be a function of x. So you put that function in this expression and integrate it and you get strain energy. And this is for the case of bending loads.